All right, so we've officially crossed into uncharted territory. Some might even say the AI war has begun. Anthropic just announced that they detected and disrupted a highly sophisticated AI-led espionage campaign. What they believe is the first ever large-scale AI cyber attack executed without substantial human involvement. So the details of this are actually insane. Anthropic breaks down exactly how the attack worked why it's so much more dangerous than any human-run cyber operation, and what this means for the future of AI agents and global security. So here's the quick overview. Anthropic says they've been warning for months that we were hitting an inflection point in cybersecurity, where AI models were becoming genuinely useful not just for defending systems, but for attacking them too. Then, in mid-September of 2025, they spotted something strange which turned out to be a highly sophisticated espionage campaign led mostly by AI agents. In fact, the attackers used the agents not just as advisors, but to actually execute the cyber attacks themselves. Anthropic believes the threat actor was a Chinese state-sponsored group and that they managed to jailbreak Claude Code into running autonomous infiltration attempts across around 30 global targets. Things like large tech companies, financial institutions, chemical plants, and even government agencies. They call this the first documented large-scale AI cyber attack with minimal human involvement. And once they detected it, they spent 10 days investigating, banning accounts, notifying the official organizations, and coordinating with authorities. So yeah. AI runs cyber attacks from China. Just another thing to add to the list of things to worry about these days. But the big takeaway from this, and Anthropic's kind of warning to the world, is that AI agents that can run autonomously for long periods of time can also carry out large-scale attacks that would normally require entire teams of elite human hackers, and that these attacks are likely to only grow in their effectiveness. So when you think of AI agents, you think of a helpful assistant automating your workflow. Maybe it schedules something for you, writes some code, whatever. But while AI agents are still very primitive, as you've probably already seen from this viral meter research graph, the length of tasks AI can do is doubling every seven months. This means that within the next few years, if this trend keeps up, we'll have AI agents that can work for days on end, completely autonomously, as opposed to the few consecutive hours they can sometimes manage today. So they're going to be able to do a lot more than just send an email. In fact, OpenAI, and probably every other major AI lab, is already working on pushing agents from hour-long tasks to year-long tasks. Their ultimate goal is to have AI doing five-year-long tasks, which by then, they claim we will have fully automated AI research, aka the start of the singularity. So again, what everyone likes to talk about when you see that chart is the incredible things AI agents will presumably be able to do in the next few years, like entire projects, AI research itself, and possibly even full-on jobs. But Anthropic is shining light on the dark side of this, the part that not many people are talking about, especially the top AI labs. So here they briefly explain how the attack actually worked. And the first thing they point out is that several of the AI capabilities the attackers relied on didn't even exist a year ago, or were in extremely early stages. Meaning, this is genuinely new territory. Anthropic attributes the attack's success to three things. Increased reasoning abilities, especially complex, long-context reasoning. Stronger agentic behavior, agents being able to run longer and act more independently and improved tool use, like web search, data retrieval, and in the cyber context, things like password crackers and network scanners. And when you put all of those together, you essentially get an AI system that can perform a large portion of a cyber attack by itself. So here's a diagram that basically demonstrates the different phases of the attack. It starts with the human operator, who picks a target and feeds it into Claude code. The operator also tells Claude that it is an employee of a legitimate cybersecurity firm and is being used in defensive testing. Claude then starts running basic reconnaissance using different MCP tools, things like scanners, search tools, and code analyzers to map the system and report back what it finds. The human reviews a summary, gives a tiny bit of direction, and the agent keeps going. Now Claude starts actually testing vulnerabilities. 
It researches exploits, writes code, runs it against the target, validates results, and then asks the human for the next move. But most of the heavy lifting is happening autonomously. Once it's in, Claude begins internal recon, harvesting credentials, escalating access, creating backdoors, and finally exfiltrating data. Again, with only small moments where the human steps in to approve something or clarify the next step. So throughout the entire process, the human is mostly just reviewing. The AI is doing the scanning, the exploitation, the credential harvesting, and the data theft itself. Basically, almost everything. They actually write, overall, the threat actor was able to use AI to perform 80 to 90% of the campaign, with human intervention required only sporadically, perhaps four to six critical decision points per hacking campaign. The sheer amount of work performed by the AI would have taken vast amounts of time for a human team. At the peak of its attack, the AI made thousands of requests, often multiple per second, an attack speed that would have been, for human hackers, simply impossible to match. So yeah, this is a completely different beast. I mean, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, but I do know that a huge part of hacking is just repetitive trial and error, plus a ton of research and data analysis. And if you suddenly have an AI agent that can fire off thousands of requests per second, nonstop, without getting tired, bored, or making the mistakes humans make, then the entire game changes. So when Anthropic says the AI did 80 to 90% of the campaign by itself, at a speed no human team could ever match, it isn't exactly surprising. But it is terrifying. The implications they lay out here are pretty scary. They write that the barriers to performing sophisticated cyber attacks have dropped substantially, and they'll only continue to do so. Which, I mean, yeah, that's not the curve you want to see going down. They also raise a question that most AI companies would avoid. If AI models can be misused for cyber attacks at this scale, why continue to develop and release them? Anthropic's response is that the very abilities that allow Claude to be used in these attacks also make it crucial for cyber defense. When sophisticated cyber attacks inevitably occur, the goal is for Claude, into which they've built strong safeguards, to assist cybersecurity professionals to detect, disrupt, and prepare for future versions of the attack, as it did in this case. So essentially their argument is that it's being built anyway, and while bad actors could use this technology for malicious purposes, like large-scale cyber attacks, good actors can also use it to defend against said attacks. It's the classic fight fire with fire scenario. Now, whether you agree with that or not, and I'm genuinely curious what you guys think, so feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments. The fact is, this does mark a fundamental shift in cybersecurity. We've officially entered a new era where cyber attacks are probably going to be more frequent, bigger, and more efficient. Anthropic ends this by urging everyone, from developers to AI labs, to start experimenting with AI for defense and to invest way more in safeguards before the next version of this shows up. The version that can't just work for hours, but maybe months or even years. I honestly have no idea what that's going to look like, and I'm definitely not looking forward to finding out. But hopefully, all the awareness around this case pushes the industry to take this seriously now, instead of after something worse happens, like an attack like this going somehow undetected. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Also, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, please feel free to drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.